It's titled, Healed of Typhoid and High Blood Pressure and Favored with a New Job. I joined this commission in November 2011, and I serve in Sanctuary Unit during the 20, January 21 days prayer and fasting. God did two great things for me. I had health challenges ranging from malaria to typhoid and high blood pressure. But during this period of fasting, God cleared everything. Secondly, after resigning from my former place of work, I, I had been trusting God for another good job. However, in the service on Tuesday last week, God's servant, the bishop, prophesied that just like Hannah was praying in the sanctuary and prophet Eli told her to go in peace, that God had answered her prayers. So I say to you, go in peace. God has answered your prayer. On Wednesday, the following day, I just decided to place a call to the place I was following up with a new job. Then I received the good news that I should come and collect my appointment letter. And here is the appointment letter, Brother M.T. Put your hands together for Jesus. Come forward. And please let the following people also come forward to share their testimony. Odekunle Banjo. Odekunle Banjo. Owo Benson Ogotoma. O Benson Ogotoma. Grace Uzoma. Grace Uzoma. Quickly come forward to share your testimony. Odekule Banjo. Owo Benson Ogotoma. And Grace Uzoma. Hallelujah. Your name and straight to the point what God has done for you. Heaven on earth. My name is Njoku Kennedy Eze. I had um, my blood pressure was on the high side. In one of the sophisticated services, a brother testified on this uh, dignified altar how God healed his own by, after hearing the word of God, he, pack, he, he got to him and they pack all his drugs and threw away. I adopted the same approach. Then since then, to, since last year, I have not been taking it. I subject to myself to the Holy Communion and the anointing oil. Then on 31st of this month, last month, December 2014, I decided to bastardize the devil by going to check it. Then when I got there, it was normal and the nothing has not been, disturb it has not been disturbing me and I have not been taking any drug. Hallelujah. Why not clap some more for Jesus? It's a faithful God. You're next online to share your testimony. My name is Owo Benson Ogotoma. I joined this commission 2004. I, I, I am a proprietor of a school and I started the business in Apo. But when the militia came, everything went down the drain. And I came empty handed to Mararaba where I did everything possible, nothing, no money, nothing to start the business. But I remember what our papa or our father in the Lord used to say. He said, just take a step and things will start, will start taking shape. And since then, I've killed onto that word. Then, as I was going by, I saw uncompleted building. Nothing, 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 full of feces and all that. I decided to go to ask Without one error with me, then the man of the woman told me, okay, I should go ahead and start the business. Then later I can pay. On some, to summarize everything, that school that was started with nothing, today it has been accredited with Wayek and Neko Center. Thank you. Hallelujah. God is a faithful God. Come forward quickly. Praise God. Hallelujah. My name is Grace Uzoma. This is over five years now. I came to Abuja. I've been without a job. Though I left my job when I finished my youth service. So I've been praying and praying and submitting my CVs in different places. It's not forthcoming. But last year, I heard from Pastor Shiabade that stop thanking God or blessing that for the blessings God has done for you. Start 
giving your testimony over what you have done to somebody's life. Now, there are some smaller jobs that I rejected. And what I did in my unit was I called some people that are also looking for a job to come and take that job. But as God we have it, they've been getting it. So I took a step, this Shiloh, to go to Canaan land. I got to Canaan land, job that I applied over how many years. On that ground, the second day, they called me for an interview. I told them I cannot make it because I was, on, I was in Canaan land. But when I came back to Abuja, I came for the interview and I said, I'm going with boldness. I got to the interview, it turned into a chat. I got there after two days I left. Today, they called me and they gave me my appointment letter that I'm here with. I come to give God glory. Hallelujah. Faithful is our God. He has never failed. Praise the Lord. My name is Odekun Lebanjo. I come to return all the glory to God for his faithfulness in my life. Uh, I started a business, roofing business last year, but I don't pray. And I've always been going around sites, taking measurements, giving quotations and all that. But I've not been getting what I really wanted. They might use my quotation and give other people a job. But later, Bishop said something here that sometimes you might be everywhere and still be nowhere. And you can be at a spot and still be everywhere. I held on to that word. I kept praying. I turned all my efforts into prayer. At least I've spread some catalogs and quotations. But to God be the glory today, the Lord has changed my life and he has made my life a testimony. Recently again, where you're looking for for favor, he said we should not look up to any man for any favor. Sorry. My friend is building a house in Oshogo, Oshun State. He called me from about last year that I should come to Oshun State and take the measurement. I went there, I took the measurement, gave him the quotation. I was hoping that it's my friend, at least I'll get the job. But he gave the job to someone else. I was not mad. I just kept thanking God. But to God be glory, someone called me yesterday that tomorrow he will pay some amounts into my account. And I'll start the job next week. Hallelujah. He got the job from strange quarters. You're clapping for Jesus. Why not clap some more for him and give him the loudest shout of victory. Shout again a loud hallelujah. Shout a 2015 hallelujah. Shout a joy-filled hallelujah. Get excited. A big hand, a big shout to the Lord. He's worthy. Come on, clap some more for him. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up those beautiful hands before the Lord and thank him that you are alive and well to see the first Sunday in the year 2015, your year of heaven and hearts. Thank him. Thank him. Praise him. Exalt his name. Lift him on high. Let your voice be heard that you are alive and well. Give God the glory due to him. Bless his name. Exalt him, the mighty God. We worship your majesty. We exalt your name. We raise you on high. We celebrate you. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Give him the glory. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. His compassion faileth not. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Is someone celebrating God for his faithfulness? Come on, let your voice be heard. Thank him in the spirit. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you glory and praise. We exalt your majesty. We lift you up on high. We thank you for keeping us as the apple of your eyes. Thank you for bringing us into this new year. Thank you because it shall be greater than last year. Thank you because it will be our best year ever. Thank you it will be our glorious year ever. It will be our gracious year ever. We give you glory and praise, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. And all the saints of God in the house shout aloud, Amen. Amen. 
you like to just welcome everyone around you, as many as you can touch. Happy, happy new year. It will be your year of heaven on heart. Heaven on heart is your experience. It's your new realm. Come on, touch three more people if you can right now. Tell them, tell them right now, heaven on heart is your portion. It's your new realm. It's as well as my new realm. Come on. Share love and fellowship with someone this morning. God is worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy. My hands are filled. My hands are filled. With the blessings of God. With the blessings of God. My hands are filled. With the blessings of God. Anyone I touch. Surely must be blessed. My hands are filled with the blessings of God. Sing it again. My hands are filled with the blessings of God. My hands are filled with the blessings of the Lord. Anyone I touch. My hands are filled with the blessings of God. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I call you blessed this year. Every step you take this year is blessed. Everywhere the Holy Spirit directs you this year is blessed. All the works of your hands this year are blessed. In your going out, you are blessed. In your coming in, you are blessed. In the city, you are blessed. In the field, you are blessed. As you go all through this year, no man shall be able to stand before you. Everywhere the sole of your feet shall tread upon is possessed by you. People who don't know you will serve you this year. At the sound of your voice, all forces of darkness will bow to you. Your going this year shall be very greater. In the name of Jesus. This year your light shall not go down. Darkness will not prevail over you. I declare that this year shall be concern free for you in the name of Jesus. It shall be sickness free for your family. In the precious name of Jesus. And every one of you who believe it, say the loudest amen you can. Give God a big hand, everybody, and please take your seat. Thank you, Jesus. For everyone who traveled and returned safely, we give glory to God. Let's thank him because of safety is given to us, now going and are coming in. With a big hand, let's thank him. No news of accident, no news of calamity. He kept us in all of our ways. To him be the glory forever. In Jesus' precious name. Again, I'd like to welcome you to this heaven on earth year. 2015, your own year, as it has been prophesied, it shall be fulfilled in your life in the name of Jesus. This year will be your sweetest year ever. It will be your smoothest year ever. It will be your most stress-free year ever. The Lord will go before you this year. He will come from behind you. He will go along with you. He will work for you. He will work with you. He will work within you. 
this year nobody will see your sweat. Yet, they will not deny your sweat. No one will see your effort this year. Yet, they will not be able to deny your effect. In the precious name of Jesus. On the behalf of our leadership as a church, I'd like to congratulate each and every one and welcome you into the year with assurance that what God has said concerning you shall find speedy fulfillment. In Jesus' wonderful name. Just as we have heard, the prophetic focus for the year, for the month, is prayer and fasting empowers for heaven on earth experience. Yesterday when I was praying, the Holy Spirit said to me, how long you wait on the Lord will determine how much you weigh before men. How long you wait on the Lord will determine how much you weigh. It is your waiting that determines your weight. Your spiritual weight is a function of your waiting on the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they will develop muscles they will become weighty it is weight that determines impact weight if you are light you cannot make impact Just as it is in boxing and wrestling, there are measures of weight. There are light weights, there are feather weights, there are middle weights, and there are heavy weights. It is your weighting that determines how weighty you are. There are people who need to pray for demons to go. There are others who speak for demons to go. And there are others who look, they just look, and demons will start flying. They don't say a word. It's all a function of your weight. Your impact can never be greater than your weight. There are those from a distance that demons start screaming. There are those who cast out devils, and there are those that devils cast the same away from. When they are coming, demons just say, hey, they cast themselves away. They don't need advice. There are those who will resist you. There are those who cannot resist you. There are those who, as soon as they hear your voice, they flee from their hiding places because they know that heavy weight is on the way coming. Shout hallelujah. If you have met with some wrestlers before, you know you don't go close to them. You watch them from afar off. You move, you clear the gap. There will be a gap between you and them. Because if he handles you on your neck, one minute, <laughs> you are gone. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. So it's our month of developing weight. Weight. And that's what fasting is about. Fasting is about shedding physical weight to develop spiritual weight fasting is about shedding physical weight to develop spiritual weight fasting is about denying your body of food to increase your spiritual weight Prayer and fasting empowers for heaven on earth experience. By the time we are done this month, Satan will know that a new you has emerged. Yeah. I thought somebody said amen to that. 
in Luke chapter 4 from verses 1 to 14, Jesus went on into the wilderness to pray and fast. And in verse 14, he returned in the power of the Spirit. He ate no food for 40 days, according to verse 2. And then in verse 14, he had developed weight. He returned with a new weight. And down the line, the description of Jesus changed. They used to call him the carpenter's son, but no more. He became the savior that he was born to be. There is what you are born to be. This month, it will begin to emerge. Every child that is born is a potential man or a potential woman. Every little baby boy is a potential man. Every little baby girl is a potential woman. But all the parts of the body must be developed through feeding and exercise. Prayer and fasting is one of such spiritual exercises we must engage in for the man, the spiritual man in you to emerge. Even though you are born a spiritual baby, you are expected to mature into a spiritual man. In this month, I see a new spiritual man, a new spiritual woman emerge in the name of Jesus. If that sounds like you, I'm talking about say loud amen to it. Prayer and fasting prepares us, listen to this, for what God has prepared for us. Prayer and fasting prepares us for what God has prepared for us. God has already prepared for us the blessings of heaven on earth. But we will need to prepare ourselves for it. So in prayer and fasting, we prepare ourselves for what God has already prepared for us. There are blessings ordained for you for the year, but they may never be yours without preparation for it. Jesus had the calling of God upon his life. He was ordained to be savior of the world, but will never have become it without his preparation. I perceive when Jesus saw that they were not giving him the due respect, they were calling him a capital's child, he decided to go to the wilderness for a change of status to assume his actual position. There are some of you sitting there, Satan has been messing you up, but after this prayer and fasting, you will assume your new position. He returned in the power of the Spirit. So, me, I will return. In the power of the spirit as well let me hear you say it very clearly right now this is why our series of teaching every Sunday this month is captioned encounter with the powers of the world to come encounter with the powers of the world to come let us quickly note there that there are categories there are grades of power there are grades of power. God's power is in measures. It's in grade. There is power. There is great power. There is the power of resurrection. There is the power of the world to come. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And in chapter 2. From verses 1 to 4, as they were praying, suddenly there was a move of the Spirit, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. That's power. Then in chapter 4, from verses 23, they went to their company to pray, and in verse 31, they prayed. 
And then in verse 33, they were filled with great power. They were filled with great power. And with great power, with great power, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then in chapter 3 of Philippians, verse 10, Paul speaking, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. So power is in grace. Power is in grace. Paul the apostle was praying also in Ephesians from uh, chapter 1, verses 17 to 23. That they will discover the greatness of the power of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead and set him up upon them on the high place above, far above principalities and powers. So the power of God is in great. And then in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 5, he's now talking about the power of the world to come. Hebrews. He talked about people who have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. That is, they are living in a different realm. They are bringing to bear the future in the now. They are manifesting what is in heaven in the now. You are getting there. Yeah. I say you are getting there. Yeah. So don't be satisfied with power. Go to the realm of great power. And then go from there to the realm of resurrection power. And then from there to the realm of the power hours of the world to come at that level there is no negotiation with the devil it is the realm of just moving as if satan does not exist you will get there <laughs> it's the realm of not thinking of the devil there are people who are thinking and are bothered about the devil there are those who are not thinking of the devil <laughs> glory to god forevermore here comes the story of a great man of god called smith who goes what he was lying down in his house in his bedroom and in the living room Satan physically went to that room to the living room and sat on the rocking chair of the man and the, Satan was rocking the chair to make noise to create awareness in their days there was no electricity so Smetugus what came out with his lamp his lamp to find out what was it that was making noise with his rocking chair. And when he got there, he saw one black entity seated on the rocking chair. And Smith Hugosworth blew the lamp on him. I didn't know you were the one. And went back to his room to sleep. That is, you don't need attention. You see, there are times you, you just, you just, you believe me as if Satan does not exist. You are getting to that realm. He said, I didn't know you are the one. He blew the lamp on the head of the devil. Shamefully, that devil left his house. Operating in the, in the realm of the powers of the world to come. What about the powers of the world to come? What is it about? The power of the world to come is a divine enabling. So it means divine enabling. I want to hear you very well. Speak your way out of cold. Speak out loud. Uh -huh. It is divine enabling to live a heavenly lifestyle in the now. Heavenly lifestyle in the now. That's the way Jesus lived. He lived heaven's life jesus was an embodiment of heaven nothing could stop him he had no financial need when money finished in the bag he sent to the sea for money to come it was well orchestrated money was already in the mouth of the fish as he said to peter go to the go to the sea or go to the river the fish already had and the fish started traveling from wherever to meet peter at the seashore the first cast of the hook the fish came up i'm the one you are looking for he walked on the sea he could not be stopped day or night made no difference to him he was fully in charge from now you are fully in charge What about the past of the world to come? 
it is the manifestations of gods in the likeness of men. Acts chapter 14 verse 11. Concerning Paul, it was declared. The gods have come down in the likeness of men. The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. That, listen to this. You don't need to change your physical weight to manifest as God. Because what makes you God is inside. This physical body is just, is just a, you know, the representation of you. This physical body is your house in which you live. The real you is your spirit man. That is the man on your inside that is translated into a God. That is the man that Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. As Jesus brought heaven down, we too can bring heaven down to bear with us here. With every part of you filled with divine enabling, including the breast of your nostril. Do you know that after these 21 days of prayer and fasting, as you touch the sick, they'll be getting healed? Yeah. After this spiritual adventure, sickness will come to your body and say, No, I can't gain access here. Why? Because as the Father sent him, so he has sent you. In the Old Testament, we saw Daniel was described as a man with whom is the spirit of the Holy Gods. Daniel chapter 5, verse 11. These were not ordinary people. They were enabled divinely by the power of God. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. They didn't know how to describe it. The holy gods were there. Daniel was there, representing the spirit of God. In the days of thy father, light and understanding was found in him. Wisdom, like the wisdom of God, was found in him. Whom the king, Nebuchadnezzar, your father, made master of magicians. From this prayer and fasting adventure, you will no longer be a slave, you will become a master. This prayer and fasting will affect the totality of your life. Spiritual and body. When you are at work as an officer, you will be operating as the head of your department. Your chief executives will be requiring you to be around at all times because you will be relevant, you will be needed without whom nothing can be done. How many of you are receiving that right now? How many of you are receiving that? Say with me, I receive it. Say again, I receive it. But we cannot wish our way into power. What will it take to assess power? You don't wish power. You don't wish power. I wish when I pray like Bishop Wedeko, things will just start happening like that. Uh uh. You need to find out. I have never prayed in my life, oh Lord, make me like Bishop Wedeko. I rather find out what is Bishop Wedeko doing. And I start doing it. And as I start doing it, I find myself developing the ways. I discovered that as I do what he does, I become what he is. A baby elephant will never need to pray to become mother elephant. All he does is to observe what the mother elephant is doing and start doing it. And gradually, it soon becomes a mother elephant. Don't pray to be me. Rather, learn what I am doing to become me so that you too can become like that. What will it take to assess power? Because power is accessible to all. Number one, you must have a thirst. 
you must be thirsty for power you must be desirous you must be longing for the power don't be passive be passionate don't be seated waiting for it to happen go for it go for it drive your way into power let there be eagerness in you for a change God is not a casual God casual people cannot catch up with him Isaiah chapter 41 verses 17 to 21 you must crave for it. When the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst, I the Lord will hear them. I the God of Israel will not forsake them. So you have to get to a point where it's like life is failing you. A thirst means spiritual desperation. Spiritual desperation. Many are not desperate enough. That's why they don't get what they are looking for. Answers await the desperate. I must get it. Don't wish. Necessitate yourself. Necessitate yourself. Let your language change from I wish to I must. I wish is a show of interest. I must is an expression of desperation. There are two different things. I wish is a show of interest i must is an expression of desperation i must get this thing i must get this thing great man of god t.l osborne went on to be there with the lord two three years ago he was a missionary sent to to, to, to india he went with his box guitar with a very fat bible to preach he will preach and preach nobody will answer him he will sing. Nobody will answer him. He got back home and said, Lord, something must happen. And he went for a meeting of another man of God called William Branham. And in that meeting, he saw manifestations of raw gospel power of God. And he said to God, that is the kind I want. I want to see that kind of manifestation. So he got back home and locked the door and said, until this power comes down, he will not give up. This power came down. T.L. Osborne went back to India now without guitar now without fat Bible little Bible God there call for the blind to come out call for the deaf to come out eruption of power you must be desperate I need a change somebody say with me I need a change that's desperation you have sat down relaxed too much when God likes he will do it for me hey don't assume that God knows your need even though he said so your heavenly father knows that you have need for this thing don't assume that God knows you have need for it because God also may assume that you like your present state you must cry out for a change so may I want a change and what will you get you will get a change now get back to that Isaiah chapter 41 uh, verse 18. He said, when you become that desperate, then I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of, of, of the valleys. I will make the wilderness pool of water and the dry land springs of water. When you are desperate enough, then you will open the waters for you. Now, chapter 44 of the same Isaiah, verses 3 and 4. He said, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Upon him that is thirsty. Not just on anyone, but upon him that is thirsty. And floods upon the dry ground. Upon him that is thirsty. I will pour my spirit upon your seed. And my blessing will follow after upon your offspring. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Psalm 63 verses 1 and 2. David said, O Lord my God, hell will I seek thee. My soul long get for thee my flesh longed for thee my soul thirsted for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water to see thy power and thy glory if you want to see power it is necessary that you must be thirsty number two what does it take to assess power it takes a purging 
spiritual cleansing holiness spiritual cleansing because god will not pour his virtue into a dirty vessel just like you a human being you will not pour water into a dirty glass to drink no before you take water you check the glass in the same way before god will pour his power into you he will check your cleanse your cleanliness your purity will determine the measure the quality of the power that you assess purity must precede power proverbs chapter 1 verse 23 turn ye at my reproof repent change your ways and if you do i will pour out my spirit unto you there must be a cleansing cleansing of your thoughts cleansing of your hands by the blood of jesus you must maintain cleanliness to enjoy usefulness second timothy chapter 2 verse 21 but in a great house that are not only vessels of gold and of silver from verse 20 but also of wood and of heart some to honor some to dishonor if any man therefore purge himself from this he shall become a vessel unto honor you have to purge yourself you have to cleanse your ways you have to walk away from evil in order to walk into righteousness you have to maintain sanctification sanctification means to be set aside from certain things for certain things you have to be separated from sin and become separated unto God what will it take to assess power number three it will take prayer number one you must be thirsty number two you must be cleansed number three you must pray Luke chapter 3 verses 21 and 22 as Jesus prayed the heaven was open chapter 4 verses 1 to 14 he returned in the power of the spirit chapter 9 verses 28 to 35 as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered heaven was open a voice came from heaven this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased and in verse 43 he returned with great power they were testifying in verse 43 what a power is this what a power is this they were amazed at the mighty power of god they were amazed at the mighty power of god after this prayer and fasting you become an amazement we must therefore pray down the powers of the world to come we must pray it down you pray down power you don't wait for power you pray down power we must pray down the latter rain which is the power of the world to come zechariah chapter 10 verse 1 ask ye of the lord for rain in the time of the latter rain and the lord will form bright clouds and give them showers he will give them showers of rain who are the them they who are calling for it he will give to them everyone every grass of the field he will give to them every grass in the field you are one of such grasses in the field you have to call for your own for it to come that measure of power that you require for the upgrading of your life shall be released to you we must also pray for access to mysteries of the kingdom of heaven now listen to this just as it is in the physical every treasure on heart here is in the deep every treasure is in the deep gold diamond silver you will never find them on the surface you never see anybody that said i found gold by the roadside they don't find it at the gold side you have to go to the deep treasures are in the deep go to the sea you don't find tilapia by the you don't find you don't find a shark by the surface you don't find sea lion those heavy heavy sea animals they are in the deep you can find tilapia by the surface but you will make no news have you ever seen where somebody is on the news that he caught tilapia no have you ever found on the news that there's somebody caught a rat or rabbit and is making a headline news but what to make headline news in the forest that you kill the lion with your bare hand to make news spiritually speaking also you cannot make news without discovering treasures in the deep you have to pray therefore 
For unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. It is the mysteries of the kingdom that you discover that gives you heavy weight in operating in the realm of heaven and earth. Mark 4, 11. Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And Paul was praying that our highest understanding will be enlightened for us to discover the things which are in stock for us. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 to uh, 21. That your eyes of understanding god will give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation the knowledge of him the eyes of understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of your calling and what is the riches of is the glory in of his inheritance in the saints and that you may discover the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power which raised jesus christ from the dead this month you are going to discover that. Yes. Now, let me quickly say, before our time is up, that Satan will keep attacking your prayer life because he knows what you will get from it. And the only way to overcome that attack is to pray for the spirit of prayer and supplication to baptize you. We must therefore pray to receive the baptism with the spirit of prayer and supplication. To be able to stand in the place of prayer without any form of weariness. Without this spirit, you will be weary. You will be tired. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10. It will pour upon the house of Jacob. The spirit of the house of David. The spirit of grace and supplication. It will pour upon him. Jesus had that spirit. He operated by that spirit. He was able to pray and pray through. Even in the midst of weariness, Jesus prayed and prayed through. The disciples couldn't because they had not that spirit. Matthew chapter 26, from verses 36 all the way to 45. Specifically, chapter, verses 40 and 41. Jesus came and made them sleeping. Verse 40 and 41. And he commented on the disciples and find them sleeping. And said, hey, Peter, what are you doing there? Could you not wait with me for one hour? Hey, watch and pray that he entered not here. I know your spirit is willing, but your flesh will not allow you. Your flesh is weak. There is infirmity in your flesh. I know you want to pray. It is the spirit of prayer and supplication that overcomes the flesh that enables us to pray. And that spirit is coming upon each and every one of us today. Amen. Did I hear your amen? amen? What does the power of the world to come look like? Number one, it is a sin-free world. When you are in that world, sin does not have power over you again. When you are endued with the powers of the world to come, dominion over sin is released to you. Romans chapter 6 verse 14, sin shall not have dominion over you. The spirit of holiness takes over and subdues the spirit of the world. That is what we call the spirit of the world. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. First John chapter 5, verse 17, I mean chapter 2 rather, First John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. But we also have the spirit of holiness. Romans chapter 1, verse 4. The spirit of holiness. When you are in deal with that spirit, you will be living holily as if Satan does not exist. You will be living holily. You will be living a holy life. Number two, what does heaven on earth, the past of the world to come look like? It is a sickness-free world. When that power comes on you, you'll be living sickness free because in heaven there is no pain, there is no sorrow, there is no crying. Revelation chapter 21, verses 3 and 4. Number 3, what does the past of the world to come look like? It is a lack free world. You'll be living a lack free life because in heaven. There is no lack. Again, Revelation chapter 21, verses 3 to 4, and Revelation chapter 22, verses 3 to 5. When you are living with the powers of the world to come, you don't know lack. You don't beg for things. You get things. You get things. You get it. You get things. There are those who buy. There are those who get. I've left the realm of buying. I get anything I want, but time I get. I get it. 
I don't buy. I don't know how much they sell shoes. I don't know how much they sell coat. I don't know how much they sell car. I just get it. You will get there. Yeah. I say you will get there. Yeah. I say you will get there. Yeah. When you are endued with this power, you become a man with of command. You'll be commanding things to come. They will be answering to you at the instance of the your, the snap of your finger. You will not struggle with needs again in your life. We saw a practical example of Moses. Moses was an, a testimony of heaven on heart. He was a testimony of heaven on heart. He became a God to Pharaoh. Exodus chapter 7 verse 1. He was a God to Pharaoh. An ordinary man became a God to Pharaoh. From now, people will see you as a God. Paul became a God to his world. We've looked at that before. In Acts chapter 14, verse, 1, verse 11, he became a God. Moses lived 120 years. His eyes were not dim. His natural force was not abated. He was strong. He was heavyweight. He could not be threatened. He could not be stopped. At 21, he climbed to the mountain to go and die. He climbed himself. They were not carrying him. They were not carrying his leg. He went by himself to the mountain to go and die there. At 120. At 120. But how did he get there? He demonstrated that the gateway to the school of endowment with power for the world to come is in prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Exodus chapter 24 verses 13 to 18 take note of that exodus 24 verses 13 to 18 then exodus chapter 34 verses 28 to 35 he went twice to pray 40 days and each time he returned the glow of his face could not be resisted he was a man and deal with the power that turned him into a god by reason of this prayer and fasting your human nature shall be turned to divine nature. Yeah. Your human nature shall be turned to divine nature. Yeah. Your human nature shall be turned to divine nature. Yeah. Everything around your life will change in the positive. Yeah. Where they used to molest you before, they will see you coming and they'll be running for you. Yeah. Where demons used to oppress you before, they will see you and vow never to come close to you again. Where they used to oppress you before, you begin to oppress your oppressors. Sir. All of you who believe, raise your hand and shout a loud hallelujah. It is true that all men can fast, but only the fasting of a believer is endorsed by God. Magicians fast. Many astrologers fast. That's why it is not every fasting that is acceptable. It is the fasting of the saints, children of God. You may fasting and not be a child of God. If you are here this morning, you know you are not born again. You have not given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You must make that decision right now. So that your fasting and prayer can be accepted before the Lord be recognized by the Lord and be rewarded by the Lord. I know there are many seated here this morning that have not given their life to Jesus. You know that there is a disconnect between you and God. You are only trying to be religious. You are not born again. Why don't you make a quick decision this morning? Let Jesus come into your life as your Lord and Savior as you surrender your life to him in absolute sense. Wherever you are seated this morning, you want to be born again? Because you must be born again. I'd like you to stand to your feet so I can pray for you and pray with you right now. Wherever you are seated, I want to be born again. I want Jesus in my life. I want my sins forgiven me. Wherever you are seated on the ground floor, on the gallery, stand to your feet right now. Church, let's give Jesus a big hand. More people are standing up to surrender their life to Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord. There are also individuals here this morning. You were once born again. But you are backsliding or you are backsliding 
what a chance, what an opportunity for you to use this moment to renew your faith, to recover yourself back to God, back to Jesus. Wherever you are, I want you to also rise to your feet so I can pray for you. Quickly, do that right now. Do that right now. Do that right now. God bless you, and God bless you, and God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, all of you who are standing up, let me request you to start coming to the altar here right now so you can be prayed for. I want Jesus in my life. I want to be forgiven. Some of you are still seated. Stand to your feet as well and come and join them. And as they do, church, let's get excited and give glory to Jesus. It's worthy of our praise. Clap some more for the Lord. Clap some more for the Lord. Clap some more for the Lord. Jesus is beginning to save souls again. You are still seated there. You know you have not given your life to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Church, you can't tell me you are tired of clapping. Because there is joy in heaven over every sinner that is saved. There is joy in heaven. There is joy in heaven. There is joy in heaven. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Now, while they are still coming, we'd like our ushers to please speedily communicate the new year package, the new year materials to everyone who does not have a copy yet. This was circulated at the crossover night. Um, welcome to heaven on earth. I'm redeemed to walk in the realm of uh, uh, heaven on earth. Prayer and fasting and pass. You know, the theme of the month is also there. I'm set for spiritual advancement. In case you don't have a copy or a set, please raise up your hand. Ushers, uh, please package them and give to each person in the set. You don't have a copy yet or a set, please lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. They will give to you right now. Ushers, please move with speed. We have limited time. We're about to take the communion right now. Thank you, Jesus. All of you who are coming, I'm waiting for you. I'm about to pray right now. Now bow your heads. Every one of you in front here, lift up your right hand as you pray this prayer with me. Say with me, Lord Jesus, to receive your gift of salvation. Have mercy on me. Forgive my sins. Cleanse them away from me. From today, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. And as I do, I am born again. I'm sanctified. I'm a child of God. I'm cleansed right now. From today, I will follow Jesus and all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we receive these souls into your kingdom. We know Satan has no more power over them. They are kept by your power. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Please open your eyes. Take a turn either to the right, to the left, as you are directed. Shout hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. Church, stand to your feet with me. Shout hallelujah. I'd like you to lift up your voice and pray for fresh baptism with the spirit of grace and supplication. Father, destroy every prayer infirmity from me. Father, quicken my body, quicken my mind, quicken my spirit in this season of prayer and fasting. Lord, empower me with willingness. Empower me with a drive. Speak to him right now. Pray desperately. Don't pray a quiet prayer at this time. I'd like you to put your life in perspective. Put your destiny in order. Raise your voice and pray the way you have never prayed before. This is a deciding moment of your life. Raise your voice and pray that prayer. My Father, baptize me with the spirit of prayer and supplication. Empower me today. All through the days of prayer and fasting this month, I will not be weary. I will not be weak. Deliver me, Lord, from the spirit of infirmity. Help my infirmity. Somebody, if you can, pray with the language of the spirit. Raise your voice. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray with the language of the spirit right now. Pray fervently. I will not have any excuse not to engage in this prayer and fasting. No. 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 I will not. No. No. Help me, Lord. Send me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to stand in the prayer place. 
help me lord to stand at the prayer altar i receive your help i cannot do it by myself baptize me lord with the spirit of prayer and supplication baptize me lord with the spirit of prayer and supplication baptize me lord with the spirit of prayer and supplication baptize me lord baptize me lord energize me lord to maintain focus to maintain concentration no distraction holy spirit of god quicken me no distraction no weakness no sickness no pain help me lord thank you mighty father in jesus precious name we are praying everyone who believe you are receiving that shout a loud amen, amen. the second way by which you can be spiritually energized for this prayer and fasting is via the communion table there were two main men who fasted and prayed in the old testament moses and elijah and something prominent about them was the communion concerning moses bread came from heaven which jesus referred to as his body as his body which we now refer to as the communion they were feeding on heavenly bread angels were they were eating angels food and because angels were never weak moses was never weak in his prayer and fasting in exodus chapter 9 19 from verse 4 god said i will rain down bread from heaven so obviously moses was feeding on that bread to get strength to stay on and in psalm 78 verse 25 the bible refers this to as the food of angels men ate angels food man did eat angels food they were eating angelic meal to gain strength for their spiritual exercise and what do you say about elijah in first Kings chapter 19 from verses 5 to 8 an angel came and tapped him and said hey stand up eat stand up eat he touched him and said arise and eat and then in verse 8 verse 7 he said again the second, second time arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee it is the food you eat that enhances the journey you make and in verse 8 he rose up he ate and went in the strength of that meal for 40 days and 40 nights unto Oreb, the month of god for 21 days you'll be on in prayer and fasting this communion will strengthen you this communion will destroy discouragement will you pray therefore as the communion still was take their position right now pray raise your voice father as i take this communion i receive uncommon strength uncommon strength jesus your kind of strength raise your voice pray very desperately jesus i receive your kind of strength i receive your kind of strength jesus i receive your kind of strength jesus i receive your kind of strength jesus i receive your kind of strength i receive your kind of strength i receive your kind of strength jesus i receive your kind of strength is somebody speaking to him right now i receive your kind of strength I receive your kind of strength to go through this period is somebody praying put your faith on the line Jesus was never weary he stayed on there in the wilderness for 40 days for 40 nights he was not weary he was not tired I receive strength I receive this kind of strength the kind you gave to Elijah the kind you gave to Moses I receive this kind of strength somebody receive it somebody receive it as you go through your duties and activities you will not be worried you will not be tired receive that strength right now receive that strength right now jesus i receive your kind of strength to wait on you thank you lord in jesus precious name we are praying by reason of this communion table this morning i decree a release of strength into your body into your mind into your spirit man to go through this adventurous moment of your life in the name of jesus by this coming on 
every form of weakness and discouragement is destroyed in the name of Jesus. You will go through each day with angelic strength. Huh? Somebody say amen to that. You will go through each day with angelic strength. Huh? At 12 noon, at 4 p.m., it will be as if you just finished eating. Huh? At 6 p.m., it will be as if you just finished eating. Receive this angelic strength. Receive this angelic strength. Quality of strength is determined by the kind of food you eat. Now you are eating angel's food. You must demonstrate angel's strength. Raise your voice one more time and begin to declare it. I assess angelic strength right now. 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 In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Get seated everybody. And wait for your turn. If there be any sickness in your body. Right now you are receiving your healing. Let me hear your loud amen. Please respond as you are directed right now. Take your portion. As you partake of this right now. There shall be no more weakness in your body. Please take that by faith. Demonstrate with excitement. As you are taking your portion. Get jumping. Get dancing. It's a new day for you. Something is bursting forth in your life. Something is bursting forth for you. As you uh, get set for that. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Choir. Sing your song. Lifted. I am lifted. I am lifted by the blood. 